Well, when I first started to plan out my all-wheel drive build, there was a lot of things that I had to take into consideration before I started to actually cut into the chassis and actually start the build. When I bought the car, it was still front-wheel drive and it had this exact VR6 engine in it. My dream was always to kind of have an all-wheel drive VR6 turbo of some kind. But in Norway, it's not really common to come across the VR6 all-wheel drive gearboxes. I have gotten a VR6 all-wheel drive gearbox since then, but still, in Norway, they are not really that common to come across. So I was kind of, should I go VR6 or should I go 1AT Turbo? At the time, those two were my options. I had already started a pretty ambitious a 1AT big turbo build. It's still in some boxes. Also, the all-wheel drive gearboxes from Audi S3s and uh, Audi TTs is much more common to come across in Norway. I know I'm gonna break or blow up the gearbox at some point, at least with the 1AT, I know I have the ability to get a spare one in Norway. So all of these things combined is what made me go for the 1AT instead of the VR6. So for the rear of the car, I have the impression that more and more people are starting to use the Mark IV subframe. I went with the Synchro subframe instead and the reason is pretty simple, they are much easier to fit. The 1AT is still in some boxes. At some point I will put it together and then swap out this engine with the big turbo engine. I don't have all the parts for the big turbo engine. I still need bits and pieces. This is only for the engine itself. I still need turbos, manifold, everything around the engine. If I was going to build another one, I would probably go for a VR6 12 valve and put a turbo on it and all-wheel drive. But this is going to stay a four-cylinder and the plan is to use it as a track car. When I started this build, there was really not a lot of information about how to convert this to all-wheel drive. I've been thinking of making a video more in detail and what exactly thing you need to do in order to go all-wheel drive. At least exactly thing what I needed to do to go all-wheel drive. And I want to make these videos because I know I would appreciate it if someone else gave me this information when I first started. If everything goes as planned, I will make a video about how to go all-wheel drive more in detail and focused on the exact things you need to do to this chassis to go all-wheel drive. At least what I needed to do to go all-wheel drive. There are some stuff you kind of just have to do and hopefully this will help some of you out. So till next time, have a good one. Bye.